How's it going folks? I'm Matthew, this is the Morris Cards, and today we're going to be doing our monthly 10 spicy decks, whatever you wanna call this series, where we take a look at 10 decks that had some good performances last month, highlight them here for you, go over them, show you some stuff that maybe we should try out. I'll be honest with you folks, I had I had to wind my net a little bit because one, I don't wanna do too many of the decks I've already done in my tournament reports, but I will do like one or two of them here. So that makes it a little bit harder for these because I do a lot of those now. And then also, I mean, have you looked at a top 16 lately it's like 50 percent tim necrom and there's like a cannon a siste or two a rock sai and then you know like maybe there's something there so I, I widened the net a little bit i went to some events like just under usually i go 64 and above and i went 50 and above i wouldn't say that there's you know like a shortage of spice but it, the format is really looking pretty pretty solved in terms of like what the best deck is at least and that deck is just kind of trouncing everything you'll see in our quarterly update here soon but with all that being said we still have 10 really cool decks to look at if you enjoyed this video like comment subscribe let me know down below which of these decks was your favorite uh and what deck you're playing what deck you playing that has some nice spice that you're trying to get in the top 16 with maybe i missed a deck you think i should have covered let me know thank you as always to my amazing patrons over on patreon their support helps me make lots of regular videos for you folks to enjoy i will very likely be adding some kind of coaching tier there been people asking about that i only have the three and five dollar tiers right now so i may have some bigger tier with some kind of more personal reward like that where you engage with me with coaching or going over your deck or something like that so let me know what you would like that to look like so with all that being said let's hop into it use the link in the description below to download whatnot and you'll get 15 dollars to use to buy magic singles sealed product get anything that you want really there's no limits you just get $15 on the account for free just for signing up. This is one of the best ways you can support the channel. And again, it's just free stuff. Use the link in the description below. Give Whatnot a try. First up, this isn't like the spiciest deck in the world. The commander's nothing wild. But one thing I do like to do in this little series is get to showcase decks that maybe I've only got to talk about in passing, but just it hasn't lined up to where I cover a tournament where they're shown. And that is with Marnius Kalgar, because this is a deck that has done pretty well recently, but it's going to be a little short of making our top 10 for the quarterly update over on the podcast. It's something I mentioned in the new decks for beginners. And so I saw a couple of them did well. I picked this one here that had the best performance that we saw. So Marnius, if you're not familiar, it's Esper, five mana, has double strike on a three five. Um, whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your control, draw a card and you can spend six mana to create two two twos with vigilance this means that one anytime we make a treasure or clue uh orc army uh, anything like that we are going to draw a card that's already powerful those things happen anyways and this also means that if we get infinite mana that we can draw our deck so you're going to see lots of kind of typical esper good stuff there will be some crossover with a deck like tivet that's probably where this deck is most similar that's the esper deck you know the most gilded drake is just super popular right now there's a lot of big old things worth stealing ledger shredder started to become more popular again i think just a decent value creature can put pressure on life totals this is definitely seems like a commander that can i mean it's swinging for six and it's making four four on like an end step to draw a card like you can use like a thrasio since putting power on the board so i think pressure and life totals could be good we have like a little staxy slant with the card like Aven mind sensor uh lotho already good and draws you a card if your commander's in play that's super lotho he's going crazy see the two clones no flesh duplicate which tends to show up in these three colorless but not seeing it here we actually have a Timna. We have a higher creature count than most blue farm decks. Like I said, we're probably punching people. We've got lots of evasive threats. Lines up pretty well. And then it makes sense with a card like Grim Hireling. We have Oriok Salvagers here. I'm assuming we're gonna have Lion's Eye Diamond in the list so that we can go infinite. Notion Thief to be taking them card draws. Consecrated Sphinx, really taking those draws. Holebreaker Horror, again, we have an infinite mana outlet. Huge notable exception in this list here. What is it? Ring, somebody ring the bell. He mentioned Orcish Bowmasters in the video. Take a shot. There's no Bowmasters, which is kind of crazy to me. It's good enough. And with this guy, you make a boat, you make an army and you draw a card. No Bowmasters? Denied? I don't know. It se seems kind of wild to me. Sorceries. We have the Time Twister. No windfall. Transmute Artifact might be on an artifact that goes infinite. We'll see. We'll see. We got the Angel's Grace popping up. It's a staple now. March of Swirling Mist. Usually... 
it's either in the decks that are really controlling or the decks that are really trying to get rid of stacks so that they can go off as soon as they, they can. I'm guessing this is more in the first camp of just trying to be controlling, keep problematic permanents off the board. Dovin's Veto also leans in that direction. We are on the Ad Nauseum. We are in the Graft Digger's Cage. Makes sense. I mean, you see a lot of like Tivits do that. We have Isochron Scepter. So we are Iso Revving to get infinite mana. That's another way we can do it. Necropotence, I'm like a little surprised to see this. It's not a card you always see in like the Esper shells. I mean, it seems perfectly castable. So I'm guessing it's leaning slightly more towards using it as an engine. And then we got Copy Enchantment, which is three mana. You can have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any enchantment on the battlefield. So uh, we've seen people run Steel Enchantment to like take somebody else's Rhystic or Mystic, stuff like that. Copy Enchantment can do a pretty similar thing. It's going to be a card that will be really good in a lot of board states, but can be awkward, you know, in, in, a certain, in certain turn cycles or certain boards. And then the mana base, we got a surveil land. We're on Prismatic Vista with one basic in the deck. Prismatic Vista with one basic seems a little weird. Don't think I would do that. I would find some other slot, probably just run a second basic, like run Snow Covered Swamp. Not sure about that one, but yeah, cool list. Again, not the spiciest, craziest thing in the world, but I did want to showcase this commander because it's like a popular one and it's one I've talked about and it's not one I've ever really covered on the channel. Speaking of never covered, we got Borborygmos and Fibblethip. This is a teamer commander. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, draw a card. Then you may discard any number of land cards. When you discard one or more cards this way, Borborygmos and Fibblethip deal twice that much damage to her creature. And then you can spend one in a blue, put it into its owner's library third from the top. What we can do with this is one, we can food chain with it because when it enters, it draws a card. So so if we can food chain, we can draw our entire deck because it draws on ETB. That means we can also team or saber tooth it. We can flicker it. And then also it is a value engine that's going to keep drawing us cards if it's just sitting in play. And it can also be removal if you need it to be discarding lands to kill problematic creatures. There's plenty of those. If you discard one land that can kill a 2-2, let's see what direction they went in. I see the Orcish Lumberjack. Maybe we're, we're trying to zoom a little bit. Notably, and this might be a theme, you know, kind of going forward, you're seeing a lot less dorks recently in the green decks because, you you know, even though our last deck didn't run it, a lot of decks are running Orcish Bowmasters and your Birds of Paradises and stuff like that is just way weaker nowadays. I mean, Orcish Lumberjack also falls to that same thing, but Orcish Lumberjack, far cry from Lanoir Elves. The Sylvan Safekeeper for our creature combo -y stuff. Vexing Shusher. So lots of ways to keep people from interacting with us already. In the clones, we've got Flesh Duplicate and Phyrexian Metamorph. Drift of Phantasms is going to let us tutor. That can tutor up a three drop, which can get us either our Squee the Immortal or our Food Chain, which is nice. Lots of good teamer cards. Clever Impersonator, another nice clone. Big stuff, we got big stuff here, which helps because our commander's five mana, so we can like Neo form that into Niv Mizzet or Elder Revolution that into Atali or Holebreaker Horror, which Atali is just a banger, and then Holebreaker Horror can just win us the game. Dead Eye Navigator is here. We can go infinite with Dockside, and then another deck running Consecrated Sphinx as an engine. It's another thing we could Neo form into. Sorceries, we got Life from the Loam. That's really cool. That lines up pretty well with our commander life from the loam is also cute too because you can get in scenarios where like you deny bowmaster triggers or any like smothering tithe triggers potentially wow i just realized marnius was not on smothering tithe which is kind of the broken card that that deck is known for and then creature tutors transmute artifact we might be cloudstone curioing so we've got a whole bunch of interaction there's that march cord we are on the mana drain we're on the force of vigor as well no brain freeze so it doesn't look like we're going to be breaching we are on fierce and swat at the five mana value for our commanders that's about where it becomes iffier though i mean we see like six mana ones run it too sometimes but becomes more of a question so we're not on cloudstone curio we are on birthing pod however Pretty standard stuff with the artifacts, bunch of talismans, enchantments. We've got the carpet, we got the wild growth. These are becoming more popular because green's having to switch options. Survival of the fittest works great with what we're doing here. Dump a creature, go grab a, you know, squee, dump the squee, go grab a real creature. Hey, we can cast squee from graveyard. Nice. Food chain, of course. Looks like our main outlet for actually winning the game for food chain. I feel like it might be helpful to point this out. We have lots of ways to get infinite regular mana so presumably we're going to get infinite mana with creature mana with food chain draw most of our deck we can either then get infinite regular mana and finale of devastation would be a, a straightforward way to win if somebody has protection from the ring or maybe it's post combat for some reason we can also just infinitely atali and exile everybody's library and win with somebody else's win con that works too and the mana base, we got Ancient Tomb, City of Traders. Been seeing more City of Traders lately. We even got a Triome showing up here. No Surveil Land, no Cradle. It's a little surprising to see no Cradle with 24 creatures. This is a cool commander. It seemed like it got a lot of shine right when it first got revealed. And then kind of like people kind of moved on to other stuff. Teamer in general is just 
done well and had very strong options to go for. But it's cool. This offers something a little bit different than those other commanders. Gets to run some cool cards too. Okay, we are talking Solvala, Heart of the Wilds. This is a deck that has kind of fallen off for the most part in CDH. It was relatively popular and kind of like hasn't really kept up very well. Monaco decks in general have trouble competing in the super optimized high color pile world, but with good pilots and it showing up at the right day, you can still get there and they have got some upgrades. So let's take a look. Savala is most known for netting a bajillion mana with large cards like Phyrexian Dreadnought, for instance, Cast the Dreadnought, ETB on the stack. You draw a card from Savala and then also you can tap Savala, make 12 mana. So you have lots of ways to make a lot of mana, ways to make infinite mana. And then oftentimes you're setting up some sort of line where you're going to be able to net mana and then you're going to bounce or some way replay a large creature that will let you draw all of your deck for a way to win like Finale of Devastation and go off. Delighted Halfling upgrade they got last year. We got a whole bunch of dorks here. We're doing mono green. We can't be that afraid of bow masters. Like we just got to live in that world. Cards like Phyrexian Dreadnought, Phyrexian Soul Gorger, Relic Golem. These are just under costed creatures for their power toughness that have some downside. We've got Artifact Hate, Artifact Enchantment Hate with Canker Bloom. Our combo, our main one we're going to be using is Quirion Ranger with a Shia. That's going to be a, a line you're probably familiar with. You get to keep bouncing, untapping, net infant mana. We're going to have untappers like Hyrex Tower Scout. We've got other ways to make big mana like Karametra's Acolyte. Bane of Progress, hit all the artifacts and enchantments. This deck is kind of known for doing creature storms. So like a lot of times you'll be missing a piece or two because your tutors are wonky because you're in mono green. So maybe instead of being able to just win the game, you have to make a bunch of mana and then draw a bunch of cards and then hope to hit it. Regal Force is a great card to do something like that. Realm Seekers enters the battlefield with X plus and plus one counters on it, where X the number of cards in all players' hands. So it can be very, very big. Team of Sabretooth, we can also go off with. If we can add a bunch of mana, we can bounce a creature, replay the creature, draw cards. Pugnacious Hammer School is a new one. It's another three mana, six, six. You attack while you don't control another dinosaur, put a stun counter on it. Sorcery, the newest one that you'll notice that's popped up here in these kind of decks is Last March of the Ant. You draw a whole bunch of cards, put a bunch of creatures into play. It does everything this deck wants to do, really. Instance, we got Emerald Charm, that's cool. Untap target permanent, great with Solvala. Short target non aura enchantment. Archer Ridge Charm, another big upgrade for these type of decks. It tutors for a creature or land, massive. It puts Cradle straight into play, that's huge. Uh, and then you're gonna see lots of like ways to buff up your creatures. Like, let's quick reflexes. Very hard to deal with. This is another card you have to really think about when you fight against these decks. We've kind of talked about it, but be aware that if the mono green player seems like they're pushing in a position where they shouldn't, like there's face up interaction, then there's probably like a Legolas's quick reflexes there that that they're just not playing yet because they're going to try to blow you out when you go to remove the Savala. Artifacts, pretty slim. We are on Null Rod. We are also on Collector Oof. A lot of times these decks will run that. They'll power out Savala quickly with like a J-Lo or, you know, Crypt, Soul Ring, whatever. And then Null Rod to slow down everybody else while they set up. One downside of that is Umbral Mantle and Staff of Domination can be shut down. Staff of Domination can be both a way to net infinite mana as well as a way to dump infinite mana to draw cards and then umbral mantle when it's equipped isn't a problem but and can be used to make infinite mana with savala but uh, if it's not equipped you're not going to be able to equip it if there's a null rod in play root maze will really slow down some people chemist transformation kind of like mono green only but it's a good way to stop a commander we're on the cradle we're on the nykthos we're on ways to make a bunch of mana tricky ones like uh wirewood lodge is pretty cool java maya is maybe not that necessary but it can do some things like turn our cradle into a forest that can be strong with some of these lists and the synergies they have access to but yeah a deck that i recently had i think i'd said put it in debate tier again doesn't mean that i don't think it can do well and it did it's just not that in that scenario not a deck i would recommend to new people but yeah it, it did the thing it showed up here not sure we'll see it continue to perform but maybe so a lot of these decks have been getting upgrades so we'll see welcome to topdeck.gg your community's home for everything competitive magic has to offer whether you're hosting an event playing for a huge prize, or trying to advertise your store to thousands of players, we've got you covered. Using intuitive pairing software, playing Magic is a breeze. All your players have to do is sign up online, then scan the QR code in-store. Give your competitors the gift of perfect information as their bracket updates in real time. Then, when the match is decided, our self-reporting software saves you time and leaves paper match slips in the past. Leave the heavy lifting to us so your community can sit back, relax, and have a great day of playing Magic. So this is a deck that I already covered. This is Kadena. I covered this in my video that it's like CDH tournament won by morphs. It's very easy to find. So I don't want to go too much into this because I think I spent a lot of time in that last video talking about it because there's so much stuff here. Broadly speaking, we're going to go over it still. Kadena is the morph commander. First face down creature spell you cast each turn costs three or less. That means when you play a morph creature, 
like Den Protector, or in this case, Megamorph, or a disguised creature like Exit Specialist that they're free. And then also when you play them with Kadena, when a face down creature enters the battlefield under your control, you draw a card. They are basically free cantrips that also have very hard to interact with abilities like Anox Survivalist. You can spend one in a green, turn it face up, short target artifact or enchantment. Turning a more face up is not an activated ability. It's like a special action you can take. Doesn't get shut out by Grand Abolish or anything like that. Very hard to interact with. They pretty much have to swat the ability or stifle it. We saw more like decks using these sort of morphs things like the teamer, uh, like the Animar deck that I covered recently. Um, they have lots of strong abilities on these morphs. They have the ability to play them at instant speed, like with Final Word Phantom or Teferi Major Zelfir, to be able to cast them each turn because only your first one's cost reduced. So just draw a card and get a thing, draw a card and get a thing. Uh, you can play really big effects like Coveted Falcon, give opponents a whole bunch of your permanents and then draw a million cards out of nowhere. So again, not gonna go too much into it i do in that last video make sure to check that one out if you want a bit more but i just want to highlight this is such a cool strategy i really wanted to showcase it here and i think in general these sort of ways that you can skirt around casting spells to do your interacting or your winning is something to really think about going forward the decks that aren't just the best in the format uh the decks that are challenging those really well right now are decks like this decks like magda that just approach from a different angle that's hard for those decks to interact with and that's super impactful right now. Holebreaker Horror, we can use to draw our deck with Kadena. We play the morph, draw a card, put it up, back up, draw the whole deck. And then we still win with typical things like Thassa's Oracle that we don't have a lot of the traditional creature tutor package, which a lot of our creatures don't really line up that great with it. They're like either face down till we want to use them or when we want to use them, we want to put them into play face down, which we can't do with something like a Neoform. Um, again, this deck is light on the traditional interaction because we're using the creatures we still have an okay amount of it but just like a little bit lighter on the counter spells because we have ways to interact hidden away very very cool list again i would recommend if you hadn't seen this one already to go check out that video where i go into a lot more detail on it i did want to highlight it again here because it's such a cool list and i think this kind of deck building and approach is something to really think about going forward this is just a cool one this is just not a commander i expect to see seize nuts <laughs> Uh, so we got Garuda, Doom of Depths. Not as a companion, here's a commander. When it enters the battlefield, each player mills four cards. Put a creature card with an even mana value from among the mill cards onto the battlefield under your control. What does this let us do? The typical thing a lot of people do with Garuda is put a whole bunch of clones in their deck. There's already a bunch of clones in the format. Put more Garudas into play, get more Garudas, or just as you go, get value creatures. You know, this hits Dockside Extortionist. Can hit Thassa's Oracle if you already have half of that combo in your hand. We're even running the OG clone. And this is really going to fuel a Mnemonic Betrayal to go crazy. That'll be a lot of fun. In our creature slots, only even mana ones to work better with our list. There's not that many odd ones in these colors that you would run. You know, something like Spellseeker. It doesn't even show up that often in Demir anyways. Duplicate Fimage, Impersonator, Clone, Gigantoplasm, Mirror Hall Minute, Mimic, Phyrexian Metamorph, Roaming Throne, which is not a clone, but will double our abilities, which is going to be crazy too. Ruthless Technomancer, which will reanimate a thing. Kind of a clone. Sakashima, another Sakashima, Spark Double, Stunt Double, Auton Soldier, which is a clone that gives Myriad and uh, isn't legendary. Calidius Assassin, which when it enters, tapped as a copy of something else, and when it does, it destroys the creature with that name. Hoarding Broodlord, not a clone, but busted. And then Tide Spout Tyrant, which can just win us the game. We're here to do one thing. We are here to Garuda. Sorceries, mean bet it's gonna be, you know, and reanimate. Any kind of way to interact with the graveyard in a, you know, impactful way or a way that we can take advantage of how much stuff we can put into the graveyard just with one casting of Garuda. Typical interaction, we do have Entomb. We got cards like Sacrifice we can use on our Garuda because we might make a clone or, you know, there are going to be scenarios where we put a big thing into play for free or cheap and then we want to make a bunch of mana while we do that. Um, and we saw that we we're on the Hoarding Broodlord so we can do the Hoarding Broodlord. Don't think we we're on Pier, but we can Hoarding Broodlord, Sacrifice it, saw in half it, do the whole thing. Essence Flux to flicker our Garuda or other strong cards born upon a wind do any of this at instant speed brain freeze to get more stuff in the yard or potentially if we go infinite mill out our opponents corpse stance might be able to loop if we have like a way to kill one of our creatures we could loop a clone on a dock side get infinite mana and then start cloning something else or do all kinds of stuff Another flicker effects. Uh, we are not on Adnos because it would be horrible in this deck. Artifacts, we are on the LED. Look like It looks like we're a breach deck, but we're not. What are we using LED for? I don't really know. You might, someone might have to explain that one to me. Uh, and then a whole bunch of good artifacts. Enchantments, we are on the Blood Chief Ascension. 
It will be very easy to kill our opponents with this as long as we can get it triggered and get all the quest counters on it. Uh, Necromancy, little surprised to not see Animate dead, but Necromancy kind of makes sense because it lets you know do it at instant speed, which can be really nice. We are in the Cavern Souls to make it uncounterable, make your commander uncounterable. Another City of Traders player, Emergent Zone, making uh, us be able to do all this nonsense at instant speed. We have lots of ways to go crazy with that. Cool stuff, not a traditional blue-black list. Definitely trying to do its own thing. Maybe might appear a bit more on the casual side, but I mean, its ability to interact and win is definitely still all very CDH. Looks like a cool list. Next up, we are looking at Tazri Beacon of Unity in Party Time. I covered the other Tazri that's really confusing. This one is a little bit more straightforward. Four and a white, cost one less for each creature in your party, which is your cleric, rogue, warrior, wizard creatures. And it's a four, six, pretty big. And you can spend two brid of blue, black, red, and green to look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal up to two cleric, rogue, warrior, wizard, and or ally cards from among them and put them into your hand, put the rest on the bottom. This is the, one of the mana dump commanders. This is a different way to go about doing it. It's probably the closest to like a five color Thrasios in that with a card like Kenrith, which is kind of most known for that, infinite colorless mana does not get you there. You need some way to convert that to colored mana. Tazri does not. You can just spend the colorless cost, get all of the creatures of these types out of your deck, put them into your hand. Presumably we're going to be able to win from there. So what do we have that's standing out? Well, we got Kennen. That usually goes infinite. Same with Devoted Druid. We have cards like Stonework Pack Beast that are party member, as well as a way to convert colorless mana into colored mana. That's something we need. We got Vizier of Remedies to go infinite with Devoted Druid. So it looks like we're very heavy on that. Baron with Dockside to go infinite. A meal with Dockside. Sig River Cutthroat is a value engine, you know, card draw engine. That's a rogue. Derevi is a wizard that can help us go infinite. Kutzel is a warrior that is also a granite ball, so it's pretty nice. Lots of good wizards and rogues already in CDH. Notable cleric that stands out is Vizier of the Menagerie. This is three and a green, three, four. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may cast creature spells from the top of your library. Mr. spend mana or mana of any type to cast creature spells. Niv Mizzet, I wonder if we're going to be on like curiosity effect stuff. That'll be cool. But yeah, you can already see the vision. We have the mana dump. We have the things that we can get to convert the mana. Get your Cutsel, your Spellseeker, your Thassa's Oracle, you know, go get your Tainted Pact and then you have a Grand Abolisher in front of it. Sorceries, Creature Tutors, Black Tutors. Relatively light on the counter spells, which is kind of what we've seen in these kind of decks like re recently. Pact of Negation, Fluster Storm, Mental Missteps, Swan Song, and then Fierce force where well, they are in the mind break trap and force negation so not that light but they're not doing the like no red blast no stuff like that i don't see a brain freeze here so presumably we are not going to be underworld breaching we got the basalt let's just go infinite we got the birthing pod i don't think there's a birthing pod line there's no like pod into this flicker the pod part away a dork into a dock side you guys know the deal with pod we're on the one ring no ad nauseum kind of to be expected when you have this many creatures and a couple of them are kind of big we do have the curiosity to go infinite with them is it interesting oh we are deafening sound tech. so like kind of similar in construction to like sisse but notably it can just go infinite with colorless mana we're on the swift reconfiguration as well to go infinite with devoted druid kind of standard stuff here again no breach lands 28 we are a cradle deck i think a cool take on five color outlet there's a lot of those right now in the format but between like this kenrith and sisse it has an interesting spot of being that colorless outlet will set up a win it's maybe some merit to, to running right now next up we are looking at devotion azami five mana mono blue commander tap a wizard you control draw a card it's a dramatic reversal way to win you know you untap your dudes make infinite mana tap them down draw cards general game plan but we'll see if there's any changes here you're gonna see a lot of wizards Fedo alchemist i, I see this in another yeah because it's a morph I, it's weird that I'm, i recognize cards not because they're wizards because they're morphs that i've seen in other decks unless you untap okay so we're gonna see a bunch of wizards that have that are relatively cheap and have some kind of ability that makes them, you know, slightly better than vanilla wizards. And you have like Vidal Aether Mage, which lets you wizard cycle. Thassa's Oracle, because this is how we win once we draw our deck. Stern Proctor, bounce those uh, Rhystic Mystics, that nonsense. Jace's Archivist is a windfall, right? Each player discards his hand, draws cards. Yeah, Lab Band, it's another way for us to win. That is weird Lab Band art. Patron Wizard lets us tap wizards that counter spells. So yeah, nothing really stands out. The newest addition this deck has, has got is Flesh Duplicate and Tishana's Tidebinder. Other than that, the creature package is pretty well just probably what these decks have mostly looked like for a while. They're wizards with abilities. It's a very pretty cool wizard. Shuts down people's ability to interact with you. It's like your wizard Grand Abolisher that has flash. Sorcery is only the two. Paradigm Shift, which can combo with Thassa's Oracle. You can remove all cards in your library from the game. 
then if you don't have a library or if it's lower than your devotion, play the Thoracle or potentially, you know, do this and then make yourself draw a card and win with Lab Man. Step through, Wizard Cycling of two, and it's just like a castable spell sometimes. High Tide, where Mono Blue makes a lot of sense. Cyber Conversion, newer card, turns something into a 2 2, loses its ability, so it can be really powerful on some commanders. Disrupting Shoal is a nice bit of free interaction. We're going to see, usually in these kind of decks, a bunch of ways to interact for cheaper free because pretty much all we have going for us is that we can draw cards with our wizards. Cards like Days, Disrupting Shoal, Foil, you can discard an island and another card to counter a spell. We gotta take advantage of this card draw, so that's what we're doing. Misdirect. Artifacts. We have a bunch that you would expect. We have Agatha Soul Cauldron, which is pretty neat because we're gonna have some wizards that if we can turn all of our wizards into having that ability, we can kind of go crazy, right? Candelabra will go wild with our High Tide. And then of course the Isochron Scepter to go infinite. Typical ones you'd expect, we are on the counterbalance. It's pretty much a control list. That Steel Enchantment I was talking about earlier. Lost in the Maze is a new one. X Blue Blue, Flash. When it enters the battlefield, tap X target creatures, put a stun counter on each of those creatures you don't control. Tap creatures you control have Hexproof. Both of these are pretty good. You can use this on like somebody's upkeep who has whatever, some good creatures, put stun counters on them as well as just giving all of your tab creatures hexproof. It's pretty strong in a deck that can just tab all its creatures down at will that might struggle against a card like Orcish Bowmasters killing all your dudes. Not a radical redesign of what the deck is doing, but just trying to answer some of problems that it faces. Um, using some new cards to strengthen it up a bit, doing the thing. Sometimes, you know, the deck can't do well if you don't bring it. So sometimes you got to bring it and they brought it and they did well. Let's take a look at a list that I briefly mentioned because I had like played against this list at I think the boil, but I don't think I got to cover in an event. And that is Aranus and Street Urchin. Aranus has Death Touch. When it attacks, return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield. And then Street Urchin has commander creatures you own have one sacrifice another creature or an artifact. This creature deals one damage to any target. So essentially we have a commander that when we have both of these in play is a Death Touch sack outlet pinger. We can ping down any creature on the board kill it instantly for one mana and sacking anything. That's good. Well, we can do things like set up Protean Hulk because we have a sack outlet in the command zone. So we're going to be taking advantage of these main aspects. We have the ability to just use Gruul creature combo stuff. We have a commander that works well with Hulk, a commander that keeps problematic creatures or whatever off the board very well. Kill the Kinnon, kill all the dorks. Uh, Orcish Bowmaster in response to the trigger, sack the thing you're targeting, kill the Orcish Bowmaster. The really tricky thing to interact with are these stupid conspicuous snoop lines with the Goblin Recruiter and stuff. Uh, we usually will talk about these with rule, but let's go top to bottom. It's Minsk and Boo. If you're in Gruul or even like Gruul X, you know, Jund, we've seen it. Uh, the Akiri Thrast decks recently. This is, Minsk and Boo is just a really powerful card. Make a big old hamster, hit people, draw a bunch of cards very powerful. Lots of ways to make mana, lots of dorks, Orcish Lumberjack making mana, Skirk Prospector is going to work with our lines, Silver Safe Keeper makes us hard to interact with, Tenderwall, so lots of kind of stably stuff for Gruul. We do have Collector Oof, where, so we're shutting down artifacts at least to some extent, Dose and locking people out in inter interaction. Vexing Shusher is a just really strong card, I keep talking about it, really powerful. Teamer Sabertooth, because if we go infinite with that, we'll get infinite treasures as well as mana, and then our commander can deal one damage to any target by sacking artifacts. So infinite treasures equals infinite win the game. Kiki Jiki, which can just go infinite with Hyrax Tower Scout. You guys kind of get most of what's going on here. Goblin Recruiter. We can put on top of our library, we can get a little conspicuous snoop action going on. If we get a snoop on top, we can cast goblins from the top of our library. That's pretty strong, especially because we're gonna have a Turch Courier on Turch, cor Turch Torch Courier. We're gonna have a Torch Courier on top. Cast the courier, give Snoop haste. Oh my God, there was a Kiki Jiki on top all along. We use that, make infinite Snoops. Then we make another Goblin Recruiter. And then what do you know? We've put a freaking Skirk Prospector on top to make infinite mana or a, but what do we do with infinite mana? You, you have infinite mana and infinite goblins, but they're tapped. What does it matter? Oh yeah, we have a commander that can just sack our infinite stuff and ping everything down. Pretty nifty, huh? And then there's really tricky stuff you can do. Like I played against, I believe it was this player. I don't know that there's another player who's using, is playing this right now. It's super tricky to be able to just tap Snoop, make a copy of the recruiter again, put a goblin engineer on top, sack, you know, act, and then Snoop has that ability. So you just tap the Snoop, put an artifact into play, you get another shuffle, put a vexing shusher on top at instant speed and just start countering spells when you have the mana. Protean Hulk can assemble like Snoop, 
recruiter courier immediately is that the best line and then skirt prospector or you could also just do team or saber tooth dockside if that's online of course but like whenever i use that combo it never is so it's really nice that the commander is an outlet for that and you can just do traditional snoop lines which is really cool here we have creature tutors gamble the tutor natural order put a hulk straight into play bit of interaction that we have trickery final fortune no red blast notably We'd have Veil, Legolas' Quick Reflexes again, super powerful card. Archdruid's Charm, great upgrade for this type of deck. Realms Uncharted is cool. Search your library for four lands with different names revealed. An opponent chooses two, put the two in your graveyard and the rest in your hand. We'll see what the lands are looking like. Artifacts, we do have that artifact package we talked about, right? Where there's a goblin, engineer. Don't think we're on welder. No welder. And we can put like a Trinisphere into play. Cloudstone Curio, another way to go infinite. Curse Mirror, clone something. Sensei's Top. Really cool too, because they can uh, reset your recruiter pile to move around through that in really tricky ways. Keen Sense lets us draw cards with our commander. Carpet makes mana, pattern rebirth, Hulk staple. Lands, so notable ones, we got Emergent Zone. Command Beacon, potentially get our commander back if something's shutting us down. Cradle to make a bunch of mana, so I gotta go get it stuff. Tree of Tails is an artifact. High Market, another way to sack something if we don't have our commander. This is a really cool deck. I played against it one time, it was awesome. It's done really well. It just won a pretty large event. This is a strong one. It's it's doing gruel stuff in a really unassuming package that I think is straight up very powerful. And I, this pilot, I think, is really big on it. It's a deck to watch out for. Another deck that approaches from an angle that can be really hard to interact with. Awesome list. Next up, Momnath, the win con of all. Now, I talked about Omnath one time already, the five color one, but this is a different list. So we're going to take a look at this one. If you would lose unspent mana, mana becomes black instead. And then beginning of your pre-combat main phase, if you look at the top card, reveal something that has three or more colored mana symbols in its cost. You add three mana in any combination of its colors, put it into your hand. If you don't reveal it, put it into your hand. So the only cards that hits in our deck, Drawn and Linvala, Micaeus the Unhallowed, and Raziketh the Foul-Blooded. I don't think there's anything down here there's no pure in the abyss this time so it's a bit different this one we are doing more of the creature combo -y stuff this is another protean hulk list let's take a look at it so we got walking ballista we're not doing dockside a meal or baron or anything to go infinite with dockside but it's because we're not actually doing infinite mana even with the ballista spoiler alert so you got kind of five color good stuffy stuff fabro elder and uh, bloom tender line up great with our commander that's all five colors spell seeker just showing up more in these kind of lists i think again once you're on like cards like displacer kitten the spell seekers and recruiter of the guards become much more impactful even in like a five color list dossy voidwalker not one we see a lot of in five color decks endurance too so yeah let's talk about the stuff that stands out so we have hulk that probably means we have a hulk pile right one of the tricky parts might be sacking our hulk you'll notice we don't have a way to do that with our commander we do have this receiver in the list to do that uh we'll see if there's other stuff as we go i'm sure there's like there like a diabolic intent footsteps of the gorio that'll let us do it too we can do something cool like get a body snatcher which when it enters exile it unless you discard a card but when it dies you exile it and return a card from your graveyard to the battlefield so we get a Hulk, we get a Body Snatcher, and then we got two extra mana to work with. So we can, if we don't have any pieces together already, uh, we can get something like Viscerous Seer, sacrifice the Body Snatcher with its trigger on the stack, and then we put Protean Hulk into play. And then we sacrifice Protean Hulk with our Viscerous Seer, and then we go get our Micaeus and our Walking Ballista. So Walking Ballista will enter. It's a 1-1 one, one because of Micaeus. It has Undying, so it gets a plus one, plus one counter. And it comes back to play. And then if it dies you know, without a counter, it'll come back, sack it. We Ballista, lose the counter, ping them for one. Viscerous Seer, sack the Ballista. Micaeus sees there's a Ballista that died with no counter on it. with And so it brings it back with Undying. So it has the counter on it. So ping, 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 we win. If you have any part of this already set up, you can do it much safer. And maybe there's a line I'm missing where you can double up on some of this, like getting Luris and then recasting something. Any extra you have, you could just get like Granabosher while you're on top of it, right? Like you have, go get Body Snatcher and Granabosher if you already have the Viscerous here. Like that's how you sack the, pro the Hulk to begin with. You got the whole thing way safer. Hulk is gonna be one of those flexible things where sometimes it's not like, oh, I have the ability to do this. It's like, oh, this card's gone. Well, what do I do now? Maybe now it's like, oh, I go get Spellseeker and Thassa's Oracle and I just win like that. Okay, cool. We also have Drana and Linvala, which is just cool in this kind of meta, right? It just shuts down cards like Kenan, Sisse, a lot of those things. You get their abilities, pretty strong. We're on the Time Twister specifically. This might be intentional because, again, we could get stuff in our yard that sets up our loops that we can't work with without. Like maybe we get something in there that we just can't 
do anything without it. So we can twist it back. Especially when I see a card like Endurance, it makes me think there might be some twister loop shenan like type shenanigans going on. And Flip with the Gorio is a reanimation spell that trigger our Hulk and we can just win instant speed. Entomb, makes a lot of sense. Brain Freeze, so we are breaching. We're just not doing it with a wheel. Fierce and SWAT, even with our four color pip commander. Wonder how often that's online. And we got some sack outlets and artifacts. Of course, we're not on ad nos. Don't really expect that with most Hulk decks. We got the carpet to make us some mana. Lots of carpet today. Survival of the fittest works perfectly in this kind of deck. It's exactly what you want. Anime dead necromancy to get back our Hulk. And we are on the breach. We're still a cradle deck. Cool five color Hulk list. Omnath is just kind of cool. You can reveal Micaeus and make three mana. That's pretty dope. It lets you stockpile mana. Again, this is another pretty interesting take on a five color pile, but has a lot more going on. I didn't even touch on the Razaketh. We're not doing like life death or whatever, but if you're reanimating stuff, you could just put a Razaketh into play, sack a couple things. If you get, you know, Razaketh and Micaeus in, into play together, basically just win the game. You just start sacking whatever, uh, Birds of Paradise, 15 times, and then you just tutor up your old deck and you win. Awesome list. It's really cool that I've covered this, what seems like a niche commander twice. And both of them were really different lists. Last one we're going to take a look at today is Malcolm Tevish Control. So we've done a couple blue black control shells, but nothing quite like this. I thought it was an interesting combination because you see a lot of partner commanders, like partner options that are usually, you know, one of them makes me mana or draws cards, and then the other one does the opposite. Like you've seen Malcolm Timna for this same reason, but here we're seeing it partner with Tevish, which is nice because Malcolm, while it pairs well with Timna and that it's an evasive attacker, it pairs well with Tevish and that you can actually ramp out up to something like worth five mana in Tevish and get it out ahead of schedule and do something really powerful with it. Start drawing a bunch of cards. It synergizes with busted cards, you know, and in, in this kind of deck like Displacer Kitten gives you an outlet in the command zone with Holebreaker Horde and Tides about Tyrant. A couple pirates that are just good, right? Siren Storm Tamer, Malcolm Alluring Scoundrel. Maybe we're doing some reanimation stuff and we're discarding like a Tide Spot reanimating it. We'll see. Kite Cell Larchness, which again, I think is just really strong right now. And then good stuffy card. Archaic Mana Midrange Shell, you know, Bowmasters. No, no Dothy here though. Spellseeker. Kitten goes crazy with Tavish. Draw a bunch of cards. Are we reanimating? We are. See? I know what I'm talking about sometimes. A uh, way to reanimate a thing, tutors, Seagate Restoration, so we're probably not nausing. Beseech the Mirror, can go grab us, I don't know, something useful. Bribery, I, I look at this card like once a video now, what, right? This is just like, you might just see this in your CDH games now. And then Lorien Revealed, not one we see as much of in CDH, but again, if you're not nausing, helps fix your mana, worth casting in the late game. Instance, Rituals, Entomb, whole bunch of interaction, Stifle even, no trick bind, just the Stifle. Dismember, not one we see a lot of, but again, no ad nauseas as we expected. Born Upon a Wind, Artifacts, we're on the Ring, we're on Imposter Mech. I keep forgetting me who Massacre is an enchantment, it's so weird. Fish, Ristic, Dress Down, Animate Dead, Necromancy, no Necropotence, and Me Hope Massacre. So that means they're a true gamer and they just realized Born Upon a Wind is just busted even if you don't have a card that synergizes crazily strong with it. We are on the Skull Clamp too, I missed that one. Usually shows up in Tevish decks, not always, but especially the lower color they are, can be just super powerful. And then Dress Down, shuts down on creatures. We're on the Urza Saga, we are on the Urborg to fix our mana. We are doing Blue Black Control with Malcolm Tevish, again, doesn't super stand out, you know. I mean, there are cards like the Fairy Cool, you know, too. I guess I didn't highlight the strategy itself of like these blue black partner options is just seeming more popular now. I feel like maybe I don't I don't know if what it is, but seeing like Talion or something maybe makes people realize, hey, I don't have to use a Isochron Scepter outlet. Is that's the only thing to do in Demir? And we've been seeing a, a, an okay amount of it, and this is just another different approach approach that I thought looked really cool. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know down below which of these decks was your favorite. You can look forward to the next thing for me probably being our quarterly update where we're going to be going over the top 10 decks of the year so far. Me and Eric for our first video in what feels like the quarter. Jesus. Hopefully next month there's more spicy stuff. Again, I had to dig a little bit deeper. Hopefully you still like what you saw here. I think there were some really cool lists to check out. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. And as always, go play CDH. Have a good one, everybody.